Okay, welcome back to Mr. Hassan's math channel. Um, I'm going to be answering now question number eight in this video from the January 2020 International A Level P1 Pure Mathematics 1 paper. Okay, this question is about a straight line which has an equation y equals k times 2x minus 1, where k is a constant, and about a curve c which has an equation y equals x squared plus 2x plus 11. So you have a straight line and you have a quadratic curve and you want to find the set of values of k for which L does not cross or touch c. So you have a, a line and a curve and you want to find the values of k, which is an unknown, it's a constant in the equation of the straight line, for which the line will never touch or cross c. So will they'll never intersect or never touch. So basically what we're trying to do is we're trying to find the scenario of the following. That you have a curve and you have a line. Okay, this is not the same curve that's been given. It's just an example of a curve and a straight line. So, so, so there's three different um, possibilities in terms of solutions for where a curve and a, and a straight line intersect or meet. It's, it's possible that they meet in two places. In which case, when you try to solve the equation or the simultaneous equation um, with this line and this curve, there would be two solutions. You would get two answers. Or it could be that the line is a tangent to the curve, in which case it touches the curve at one place. That means when you try to solve um, the simultaneous equation with the line and the curve, you would get what's called a repeated root. You get one answer. Okay, you get one answer. It will generate a perfect square in your quadratic and you'll get the same answer twice, basically. So that's what a repeated root represents when you have like something like this, a tangent with a curve and the, and the line touch at one place. Or the other possibility, which is a possibility that we have to consider, is that the line and the curve never, ever intersect. That the curve turns up before the line, before it can you know, touch the line. So that's, that's a possibility. That is the, you know, that is the situation that we have to consider that there will be no solution, okay? And how can we distinguish between these three cases? Well, if you try to solve the pair of equations simultaneously, where you substitute one of the equations into the other, if it was a case where there were two solutions, then we would find that the discriminant of the equation that you find when you try to solve them simultaneously will be positive. If there's one solution, then the discriminant of the equation that you find would be equal to zero. And if there are no solutions, then the discriminant would be negative. So that's the case we have to consider, that when we try to solve these, these equations simultaneously, uh, we end up with a negative discriminant in that equation. So first of all, the straight line has equation y equals k times 2x minus 1. And the curve has equation y equals x squared plus 2x plus 1. So the first step is to try to solve them simultaneously. So we can substitute one equation into the other. So for example, I could replace this y. I could replace the y in this equation with x squared plus 2x plus 11. So I end up with x squared plus 2x plus 11 is equal to k times 2x minus 1. So I've substituted one equation into the other. Now, when I rearrange this equation and try to you know, put it in a form which I can solve, um, then I will be able to, I'll have the equation of um, the equation which will tell us the solutions for where these two will intersect. So I'm going to now do x squared plus 2x plus 11 equals, this is going to be 2 times kx minus k. Let me bring all the terms on one side. So you're going to have x squared, and you're going to have plus 2x minus 2kx, and you're going to have a plus 11 and plus k equals 0. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to write this as an x term by taking out the common factor um, of x from here. So I'll have x squared plus, I'll leave, I'll leave the 2 and the minus 2k inside. I'll put x on the outside. This is like the x term. I'm not taking out the common factor. I'm just taking the x to make this look like the x term. This is the x term, 2 minus 2k plus k plus 11, 11 plus k, same thing, 
equals zero. So I now have a quadratic equation. The solutions to this quadratic equation will tell me where the line and the curve intersect because it was an equation that was formed when I substituted one of those equations into the other. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to say, okay, I know that if there are no intersections, if there are no solutions, basically, if there are no intersections, I'll say intersections, therefore no solutions. Okay, therefore, b squared minus 4ac must be negative. So in this particular equation, a is equal to the coefficient of x squared, which is 1. b is the coefficient of x, which is 2 minus 2k. And c is equal to the constant, which is k plus 11. So we can now say b squared minus 4ac, so 2 minus 2k all squared, minus 4 times 1 times k plus 11, we know that this must be less than zero for there to be no point of intersection. Okay, this is going to give me four minus, you're going to have two times two times two, that's eight k. I'm going to have uh, plus four k squared. You're going to have minus four times k is minus four k. And minus four times 11 is minus 44. Minus 44. Okay, so we have minus 44 is less than 0. Now we've got 4k squared minus 12k and minus 40 is less than 0. All of them are divisible by 4. So you have k squared minus 3k minus 10 is less than 0. Okay, so let's try to solve this equation. Let's try to solve this inequality. So basically... When I solve this inequality here, I will have found um, the values of k for which there will be no solution, for which b squared minus 4ac is less than 0. So we have to solve this quadratic inequality. Now this is the di discriminant of the curve of, of the, this equation that we formed is kx squared minus 3x minus 3k minus 1 minus 10 sorry this is the equation of the discriminant what we found here is the equation of the discriminant of our equation that we formed so when this discriminant is less than zero then you know our condition will be satisfied when this discriminant is less than zero then there will be no solutions to the original equation so we've got to find when the discriminant becomes less than zero so first of all let's find out when it's equal to zero so let's find out when the discriminant is equal to zero okay when k squared minus 3k minus 10 equals zero so let's factorize this so first of all i'm finding out when it's equal to zero then we can decide when it's above or below zero so you got k and you got k you got a plus and you got a minus two numbers multiplied to give you uh, negative 10 and add to give you negative three it must be negative five and two so you got k equals minus two and k equals five those are the two places where the discriminant is equal to zero. Now I'm going to sketch a curve, and this curve doesn't represent the curve, you know, it doesn't represent the origin, this function, or, or even the function before it. It doesn't represent, um, you know, even, even this. It represents, sorry, it represents, it does represent this. It represents the discriminant. It doesn't represent what I mean. It doesn't represent the original equation of the curve. Okay, it doesn't represent the original equation of the, uh, you know, what we formed when we're trying to find whether there's any solutions or not. What it represents is a sketch of what the discriminant looks like. This is a sketch of what this discriminant looks like, so I can find out when the discriminant is positive or negative. So we know the discriminant is equal to zero uh, when k is minus 2 and k is 5. So it's like we're, we're plotting k against the discriminant. So the y-axis is the discriminant, and this axis is k, and we're finding it when is the discriminant less than zero. Now, k squared minus 3k minus 10 would go down. It would go through negative 10, and it would then turn up. So it would go something like this. It would turn up and go like that. Okay, so it would look something like this. Let me just move that along. One second. That's better. Okay, so it goes to negative 2, 
and it goes through five, um, that's when the discriminant is equal to zero. We want to find when it's less than zero, and we can see that the discriminant drops below zero between the values of minus two and five. That's when it drops below zero. So any value of k, okay, which is um, between minus two, 2 and 5 will make the discriminant become negative. So we can say that, okay, the discriminant is less than 0. Okay, so the discriminant discriminant, oops, I spelled that all wrong. So let's just say, we don't have to say that, just say b squared minus 4ac is less than zero when k is between minus two and five. We don't want to say, we don't want to put equals with this because when k is equal to zero, that's the place where it will have one solution. So there'll be one solution when k is equal to minus two and equal to five. There'll be two solutions when k is less than minus two and greater than five. And there'll be no solutions when k is between minus two and five because that's when the discriminant becomes negative. So when the discriminant becomes negative, that's when there'll be no solution. Okay, so please note that what I'm sketching here is not a, a sketch of the original function at all. It's a sketch of the discriminant to find out when the discriminant is equal to zero, when it's positive, and when it's negative. We need to know the case when it's negative to answer our question. That's the case where there will be no solutions to the equation where the, the line and the curve will neither cross nor touch. Okay, so I hope that was clear. And that's the answer to question number eight. And if you would like to see other videos about or from this paper, please click on the, um, on the end of screen, which will come over here. And if you would like to see um, other, paper, other questions from this topic of quadratics, then please click on this. Um, icon um, this is about in in equations and inequalities I guess and also if you'd like to subscribe to my channel click on this icon here and um, thank you for watching and I'll see you again soon